one type of question you're going to get x allies predict the product of electrolysis. So the rule of thumb is actually the cation always going to form at the cathode. The anion is going to form at the anode. So the first type of solution is actually the molten salt. For example, if today you actually trying to isolate your sodium and the CO2 by doing electrolysis of the molten NaCl. So what it really means is actually today we are going to have a electrolysis cells. We have two electrodes connect with electric wire and batteries. And inside this solution, all you have is actually sodium plus, close or minus. It's molten, okay? And because it's salt, it will exist in the ionic form. Once you have this molten salt, so the electrons will go from your battery into your electrolysis cell. This is actually where we're going to have the G-Rock. means this one is actually your castle. And then, of course, on the other side, here will be actually your LoRa. Oxidation is going to happen, and this will be actually your anode. The cations inside your solution will actually move to your castle, and the anion will move to your anode. Therefore, in the end, you will know at the castle, what you're going to have is your G-Rock, right? So your Na plus is going to gain electrons and produce the reduced sodium. And your anode, okay, your chloride, is going to undergo an oxidation reaction to produce your CO2 plus two electrons. So the overall reaction will be you want to balance the overall charge, right? So there are two, there are one. So you to actually multiply your equation at the castle. So you can add it all up. So in the end, you're going to have two sodium plus, plus two electrons, plus two Cl minus. That's going to give you two sodium solid, plus Cl2 in the gas form, plus two electrons. Two electrons, two electrons, they are going to cancel out. So let's actually the overall reaction you are going to have. Now you want to actually calculate your E not cell. So here is the standard reduction half reaction because your sodium gain one electron, it becomes sodium solid. So what you need to do is actually go back to that big chart and then looking for the sodiums on the reactant side. So you should be able to see that sodium gain one electron becomes sodium. They will actually need you to supply at least 2.71 volt to make the things to happen. So you know your E naught for this reduction is negative 2.71 volt. How about the next one? The chloride minus become CO2. This is undergo a oxidation reaction. So you want to actually looking for the Cl minus at the product side of the half reaction. This one is actually the one you're actually looking for. So you know your E knock oxidation is going to equals to negative 1.36 volt. So your E cell in total is actually the sum of two. It means 4.07 volt. What it really means you need to actually supply 4.07 volt so they can actually drive the whole thing. So you can have the cations go to your castle, anions go to your anode. So let this value is actually the minimum voltage that your batteries need to supply. The second and third type is like more complicated. But the basic principle okay, is that in the second type solution, what you're going to have is actually going to have multiple melted salt. Okay, that means actually I'm going to have multiple different cations and multiple different anions. Okay, so you will ask you, okay, among those different cations, okay, which one will form first? Which one will actually form at the least voltage supply? And then the same thing, which anion is going to form at your anode? To answer those questions, the rule seem to use is actually that if you have a cation, it has a less negative E naught value. Okay, and less species will got reduced first. The same thing applies to your anion. Okay, the anion with less negative 
E not oxidation values, E what got oxidized first. Remember, like pretty much all the potentials you see here, okay, they will be actually negative, right? Because if we are doing the electrolysis, okay, it will tell you, okay, how much voltage you need to actually apply. Let's give you some examples so that things maybe become more clear, okay? Predict the product of electrolysis of molten mixture of sodium chloride and the aluminum fluoride. What is what are the KIRs in this Milton salt solution? We can see that in the first one you got sodium plus, right? And then in the second one you got aluminum three plus. And then for your anions, you should see that you have Cl minus and the F minus. So once you see this then you need to actually find out the corresponding reduction potentials and the corresponding oxidation potential. So let's look at the sodium plus and aluminum three plus. So reduction potentials, look at, at the reactant side. Okay, you want to look for the sodium plus, which is this guy, right? It's negative 2.71. Okay, so negative 2.71. For your Al3 plus will be this guy, right? Negative 1.66 volt. Every time you see this negative sign, means actually to actually apply certain voltage to your cell so that the electrolysis can happen. So for your aluminum 3 plus, you only need to apply 1.66 volt. Okay, but for your sodium, you need to actually apply 2.71 volt. Based on that consideration, you know this is actually the one that's going to get reduced first. Then using similar principle, you want to look for the Cl minus and the F minus. So if you look at the Cl minus, it's this guy, right? So let's actually re reverse reaction. So you know the E naught ox is negative 1.36 volt. And then for your F minus, this guy, right? That means you need to provide 2.87 volt to drive the oxidation of your F minus. Okay, so once you get these values, which one is actually easier to oxidize? The answer should be this, right? So less negative species. In the end, you know the overall reaction should be actually a combination of this. Al3 plus is going to get reduced, become Al solid, and then your E naught is equal to negative 1.66 volt. For your oxidation, is actually 2 Cl minus is becoming Cl2 plus two electrons, and then your E naught oxidation is negative 1.36. Okay, so the overall reaction is that you want to balance the charge. Okay, you need to actually balance the two equations, right? So you want to actually multiply two for the first equation, multiply three for your second equation. So in the end, you have two aluminum three plus plus six electrons plus six Cl minus. That's going to give you two aluminum solid plus 3Cl2 gas plus six electrons. Okay, and six electrons, six electrons cancel out. Okay, so this will be actually your final balance equation. How about your E not cell? E not cell will be actually the sum of two. So that will equals to negative 3.02 volt. So you need to actually apply 3.02 volt to complete the electric circle. So that your aluminum will get reduced, your chlorine will get oxidized to form the Cl2. All right, so with that in mind, let's look at another example. Consider a solution containing 0.1 m of 
all these different species. You have multiple mutant cations here. Predict the order in which the metal play start to actually form, okay, when the voltage starting turning up from zero. So again, apparently this is actually the things that you know is undergo a uh, electrolysis reactions, right? So you want to actually know what is your E naught for each species. So here you have PB2 plus, Cu2 plus, Sm2 plus, Ni2 plus, and then your Zn2 plus. The first thing you do is actually you want to actually check out your uh, standard reduction potential table and then pull out the numbers. So assuming I pull out all the value for you, okay, so this is actually negative 0.13 volt. This is 0.34 volt. This is negative 0.14 volt. And then negative 0.23 volt. And then negative 0.76 volt. So those are the standard reduction potentials. With this information, we know that the chaos with the less negative standard reduction potential will get formed first. So based on that principle, which metals will actually form first? I guess you got a little bit confused, right? Because we have a positive value here. So what does positive value mean? The positive value means actually it's going to happen spontaneously. If your E not cell is actually positive, that means actually it's going to happen spontaneously. You don't need to even apply the voltage. Therefore, they will be actually the first guy who got deposit on your castle. Who will be the second one? Let, okay, so let is the second one. Third one, fourth. Okay, so this will be the fifth one. Therefore, you know, when you start to turn on the voltage, you follow these orders. And all this care will deposit on where? Castle or anode? K on goes to castle, N on goes to anode. Okay. So let's actually the things that you will need to actually know how to address it. Let's go to the very last solution. The solution contains waters. Water itself is actually a very unique molecule. It can undergo either the oxidation or reduction. So here I list the standard reduction potential of your H2O and the standard oxidation potential for the H2O. Okay, so one is next to 0.83, the other one is actually next 1.23. If the water undergo a reduction reactions, it produces H2. If undergo an oxidation reaction, it produces O2. And to actually memorize these two equations, once you know this, the principles we learned so far, they all apply. So you want to find out if you have multiple salt together with your water, and then you consider all their standard reduction potential, all their oxidation potential. The one with the least negative values is going to be the one that got elect electrolysis. So this is an example. We did a product of the electrolysis of a mixture of 1N sodium chloride AQ and 1N KNO3 AQ okay, with inert electrons. So this is actually the thing they need to see you now what is actually need to be considered. So be very careful. If you look at this equation, it says AQ okay, in the electrolysis process that belongs to the solution type 3. So again, you're going to actually analyze your system. What are the K ions? What are the N ions? Because we see AQ, you know I need to consider water in both cases. And then I analyze my K ions. I know from here I have sodium plus. From here I have K plus. For the N ions, I know I have Cl minus and the NO3 minus. So one of this is going to form the product at the castle. One of this is going to form the product at the anode. All you need to do is actually find out what is the E naught for these three. And then in this case, you want to find out the E naught oxidation of these three. For water, the standard reduction potential is 0.83 volts. For the oxidation, it's actually negative 1.23 volts. Then the next thing is actually, again, you need to go and check out your table. Then you'll find out your sodium plus is negative 
2.71 and then potassium is actually negative 2.93 and again you can also check out the enough oxidation for your Cl minus which is negative 1.36 volts when you check out the oxidation potential for your NO3 minus okay typically you won't be able to see it on the table the reason it is actually not on the table is simply because they cannot be further oxidized so you're going to see NO3 minus or the SO42 minus if you see the species is relative complicated, like multi atom species, it won't be your answer. So just ignore it. OK, so right now you actually got the things sold out. You want to pick the one with the less negative values, and there will be extra species undergo your reduction. OK, in this case, you will be your water. And then when the water is actually got reduced, you know the hydrogen gas will be the product so you're going to see the hydrogen gas forming at the castle similar things for your ena ox h2o has the less negative values so the h2o will actually undergo an oxidation reaction and it's going to produce o2 gas at the anode and then the e not cell will be the sum of these two which is going to give you negative 2.06 volt. Okay, you need to actually eventually provide 2.06 volt to drive the reduction of your H2O to produce H2 and the oxidation of H2O to produce O2. So again, you can see this question is actually very tricky because this was multiple choice type questions, right? It's going to list the species. So they're going to say, OK, I'm going to have sodium or potassium or Cl2 or O2 or H2. OK, all those things will be the option you're going to have. You need to pick one that you know is going to form on the castle or on the anode. So if you can actually identify this, then you won't be able to think of the reduction or oxidation of your water. So that's why it becomes a little bit more challenging for students to actually answer this type of question correctly.